independent investigation to the January 6 riots on Capitol Hill is now in the hands of the Senate. Yeah, the House passed a bipartisan plan to create a 9-11 style commission to investigate the insurrection. One of those votes came from Congressman Richie Torres, who now joins us to explain what exactly comes next. Good morning to you, Congressman. Morning. Thank you for being here. It's an honor to be here. So, Congressman, let's begin with this first. It's it, all but one of your congressional colleagues from New York voted in favor of the independent commission, right? Who voted against it? Just tell our audience and, and why. Um, my understanding, it was it was Congress member Maliotakis. There was opposition, 11th hour opposition from the Republican Party. You know, January 6th, the January 6th commission uh, would be modeled after the 9-11 commission. Mm -hmm. And just like the 9-11 commission gave us a fuller picture of the 9-11 attacks, we were hopeful that the January 6th commission would do the same when it comes to the January 6th attacks. And keep in mind that the commission would be bipartisan and independent, independent of politics, independent of both the executive branch and the legislative branch. Um, the membership would be bipartisan. The Democratic leadership of the House and Senate would appoint the chair and four rank and file commissioners. The Republican leadership would appoint the vice chair and four rank and file commissioners. And in addition to bipartisan membership, the actual investigation would be bipartisan. The authority to issue a subpoena would require bipartisan agreement. Well, that's the goal, but it doesn't seem like that's truly happening because battle lines are being drawn right now along party lines with some Republicans really trying to downplay the incident. So what do you think it's going to take to get the Senate to approve this measure if they can? Well, I'm hopeful that the bill has a path to a filibuster-proof majority in the Senate. Um, but but here, here's how I view it. January 6th was an insurrection against the United States Capitol. Right? It was an, an attempt to overturn the results of our election, to overturn the peaceful transfer of power upon which our democracy depends. And if we are not willing to investigate an assault on our democracy, then why are we here? Like We took an oath to defend the United States Constitution, and we have to honor that oath not only with our words, yeah. but with our deeds. And so when is the Senate expected to vote on the measure? And what happens, Congressman, if they actually don't, if they vote against it? I'm expecting a vote in, in the weeks to come. But if, if the Senate fails, uh, then we would have to rely on, on committees within Congress to investigate the, the facts surrounding January 6th. But, but that is far from ideal, because committees tend to have more than one responsibility and tend to be much more politicized, whereas an independent commission has one mission to investigate the January 6th attacks uh, and would have an end date. The, the report would have to be finalized by the end of the year and would have to contain both findings and policy recommendations mm -hmm. for Congress to legislate. All right, I wanna shift gears uh, really quickly right now and talk about women's rights because they're a hot button issue right now, especially in Texas. It just passed one of the most restrictive abortion laws on the book since um, the Supreme Court actually now, we understand, can overturn possibly Roe versus Wade. So is Congress prepared to act to protect a woman's right to choose? Well, the Constitution protects a woman's right to choose, but there's a limit to what we can do because there's a conservative supermajority on, on the Supreme Court. Um, and the Supreme Court, the conservatives on the Supreme Court have been intent on overturning Roe versus Wade uh, since the Roe decision in 1972. So I am deeply concerned. Um, mm -hmm. There's a conservative supermajority. There's a Mississippi law that would that prohibits most abortions in the second and third right. trimester. Mm -hmm. And if the Supreme Court were to uphold the law, and there's a, a case as we speak, it would fundamentally eviscerate a woman's right to choose as we know it, it would cha change the legal landscape. And for me, a woman's right to choose is a matter of gender equality. Yeah. Um, women should have control over their own bodies, just like men have control over their own bodies. Right. Uh, Congressman, I want to talk about what's happening here locally because there's certainly been an increase in anti-Semitic attacks across New York. In one incident over the weekend, a Muslim driver helped get two Jewish teenagers to safety after they were targeted by three suspects. So first we had the Asian attacks, right? Now anti-Semitic attacks seem to be on the rise. We saw that there was a bill passed by your colleague, Grace Meng, last week against Asian attacks. Do you think we need one like that, stronger hate crime bills on the books specifically for anti-Semitism? And would you sponsor one? We certainly need stronger legislation, but you know, both elected officials and activists have to be mindful of their words. Words and ideas 
have consequences. And the demonization, the hysterical demonization of, of, of Israel as a Jewish state, of the Jewish community, has set off a global wave of anti-Semitic vitriol and vandalism and violence. And we have to lower the political temperature. There's a difference between promoting peace and inciting hate. And much of what I see on social media is aimed at inciting hatred rather than promoting peace between Israelis and Palestinians. So we have to lower the political temperature of our political discourse. It's a lot of work to be done. We do appreciate your time as always. Thanks for joining us today. Of course, always a pleasure. Good to see you.